Hello everyone, I'm Brian Bishop. We're here today at the Somerville Media Center, and this edition of Rally Point is a pilot series to what could be future shows as we discuss current issues that affect our veterans and their families. I'd like to thank Erica Jones and the entire staff and crew here at the SMC for having me here and look forward to a great partnership moving forward. On today's show, we look at some of the legal issues that our veterans are facing and some solutions that may help. I'll be joined in the studio by the Secretary of Veterans Services for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Francisco Urena, and the Co-Executive Director and Chief Counsel of Veterans Legal Services, Anna Richardson. We'll be discussing how the Department of Veterans Services and Veterans Legal Services work together to address the overwhelming legal issues that affect veterans as they reintegrate themselves back into civilian life. We'll be back in just a moment with some pretty important news going on out there that might affect you as a veteran. We'll be right back. America's service members and veterans are strong, forged out of bravery, sacrifice, and duty. From all corners of the country, a family for life. But whether they served in lands far away or communities close to home, some of these men and women may face difficult times or even crisis. But sometimes reaching out for help can be the most challenging and worthwhile mission of all. Thankfully, friends, family, and communities are standing by their service members and veterans now more than ever. We're all in this together. When you recognize something isn't right, make the call to the Veterans Crisis Line or Military Crisis Line. During times of crisis, reach out and call. Dial 1-800-273-8255 and press 1. There's quite a bit of news out there affecting our veterans, and here are some of the highlights. Well, the United States Department of Veterans Services finally has a new chief. Robert Wilkie took the oath of office Monday, July 30th, to become the new Secretary of Veterans Affairs and takes over a department riddled by poor morale among employees and political infighting at the top. At a White House ceremony, President Donald Trump looked on as Vice President Mike Pence swore in Wilkie, who's 55 and a native of North Carolina, who served as an intelligence officer in the Navy and holds the rank of Colonel in the Air Force Reserves. Wilkie's taking on a very tough and important position, said President Trump. Trump said Wilkie had the task of implementing two key pieces of legislation passed in his administration, the VA Mission Act expanding private health care options, and the VA Accountability and Whistleblower Protection Act, that's hard to say, aimed at speeding up the process of firing poor performers. Vice President Pence also swore in Wilkie's predecessor, Dr. David Shulkin, who was fired by Trump in March. Wilkie became the 10th VA secretary since the department was made a cabinet post in 1989 and was the case with Shulkin, the only carryover from the Obama administration in the Trump cabinet, Wilkie was not the president's first pick. Trump nominated Rear Admiral Ronnie Jackson, his personal physician and head of the White House Medical Unit, to head the VA, but Jackson withdrew his name in uh, mid-questions about his lack of experience at the top. Wilkie, who has been serving as Undersecretary of Defense for Personnel and Readiness, was brought over to the VA in early April to serve as an interim basis as VA Acting Secretary. As Acting Secretary, Wilkie indicated he was well aware of the poor morale at the VA and backbiting at the top over the expansion of private health care options for our veterans. Wilkie will be taking over the nation's largest health care system with 171 hospitals and more than 1,000 clinics and other facilities. Wilkie said his main concern in taking the VA Secretary's job is getting veterans access to the treatment they have earned. Wilkie says he is determined to work tirelessly to change and improve a culture that has plagued the department for decades. Mr. Secretary, we wish you well. Our veterans need help and they are waiting. For more information on Secretary Wilkie and all VA programs, visit www.va.gov or contact your local veteran service officer. A little closer to home, a comprehensive veterans benefits bill that would replace Massachusetts Valor Act with a narrower veterans jail diversion program is awaiting a signature from Governor Charlie Baker. If signed, the bill would expand property tax breaks for veterans and give paid military leave to members of the armed forces. The BRAVE Act, which passed unanimously in the House and Senate back in May, would repel the state's controversial Valor Act while expanding benefits to service members and their families. 
The Valor Act was signed by Governor Deval Patrick in 2012 to create a way for veterans who were returning from combat with substance abuse and mental health problems, a way to get, get by without getting stuck in the criminal justice system. The well-meaning legislation allowed some veterans in Massachusetts to avoid or try to avoid assault charges, thus says the Boston Globe. After a New Bedford man accused of assaulting and strangling his girlfriend was cleared of all charges based on his military service in 2017, legislators promised to change the law. The Valor Act established a way for veterans with no criminal record who were charged with a crime in district court to be sent to pre-trial diversion programs focused on treatment or education. In April, Governor Charlie Baker signed a sweeping criminal justice reform bill that expanded diversion programs to all adults and at that point, any concern over supposed diversion abuses were resolved, said Senator William N. Brownsberger. Veterans had the same rights as civilians at that point. He said under the new language introduced last week, a veteran would be considered for a diversion program after a 30-day assessment, which is twice the number of days allowed under the state's new criminal justice reform bill. The bill also allows veterans who have developed mental illnesses or substance abuse problems as a result of combat diversion for one drunk driving charge if no one was injured. Less controversial elements of the bill also reserves parking spaces for veterans at local government buildings, and it increased the cap for the amount paid for funeral benefits for indigent veterans from $2,000 to $4,000 for burial. It also marks April 5th as Gold Star Wives Day. This bill provides studies on a number of topics. All of this is the goal of understanding the many issues our veterans face. This bill continues to ensure Massachusetts will never forget our veterans and extends our commitment to lead the country in veterans' benefits. The Walnut Hills visits the Commonwealth this summer in two locations, and this summer the Commonwealth played host to the Vietnam Veteran Memorial Fund's Walnut Hills. The citizens of Fitchburg and Weymouth saw thousands of visitors pay tribute to the men and women who heroically served during the Vietnam War. 24 hours a day, a stream of veterans, active military, family members, and curious ordinary citizens gathered to view the names and relive memories of service and sacrifice during one of the most turbulent times in our history. The wall features the names of more than 58,000 military members who died in Vietnam or from wounds sustained in the Vietnam War from 1957 to 1975, and it's a slightly smaller replica of the monument erected in 1982 in Washington, D.C., which came long after the return of those who survived the tours overseas. An important event taking place right here in Somerville is the 2018 Somerville Veterans Memorial Parade. You might be asking yourself if it isn't time for Brian to take a vacation. Well, you might be right there, but I can assure you that you're not hearing things, and I haven't started packing for McLean's Hospital just yet. As many of you remember, this past year with the threat of severe weather, we had to cancel for the very first time the Veterans Memorial Parade that is usually held in May. We promised that we would not say goodbye to 2018 without presenting an incredible celebration of service, and that is what we're planning to do. So mark your calendars for Sunday, November 4th, as the first Somerville Veterans Memorial Parade that will truly celebrate the service of our veterans and honor our active duty, guard, reserve, and auxiliary units as we kick off Veterans Month here in Somerville. There'll still be bands and, of course, the ever-popular Shriners, but this will be our city's largest parade so plan to join us for this spectacular event. The parade will begin at noon and follow the traditional route with some minor modifications expected for any impending construction issues that might arise. This is one event you will not want to miss. When we come back, we'll be speaking with our guests, Secretary Francisco Urena and Anna Richardson on veterans' legal issues. This When Rally Point continues. At the end of your workday, do you know you've made a difference? These people do. You see, these doctors, nurses, counselors, and health technicians work for the Department of Veterans Affairs. They get to care for perhaps the most deserving of all Americans, the men and women who've served in our nation's armed forces. Visit vacareers.va.gov to find out how you can make a difference, too. And welcome back to Rally Point. When a man or woman joins the military, they swear an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. They are sharp, well-trained, and highly motivated. They're sent to parts all over the world and are subjected to situations that are in some cases horrific and unimaginable to civilians. 
But no matter the situations, most of our soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen are able to complete their missions and return home. However, some never come home. Those that do return may be plagued with post-traumatic stress, traumatic brain injuries, they develop substance abuse problems or mental health illnesses that cause them to make poor decisions and they begin to have legal problems. In most cases, these issues arise due to their service and the situations they were forced to endure. Our guests today are all too familiar with these situations and work every day to ensure these veterans are taken care of and have legal services and information on how to get help with any and all issues they may be faced with. But they do so in different le at different levels and in different ways. So joining us now is the Secretary of Veterans Services for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, Francisco Urena, and from Veterans Legal Services in Boston, the Co-Executive Director and Chief Counsel, Anna Richardson. Welcome to both of you. It's so good to have you here today, and welcome to Somerville. Uh, Mr. Secretary, this is the second time you've been on Rally Point. You were in our inaugural address and uh, had some wonderful information, and people wanted to know who you were because they said, who is that handsome man? Who, uh, who was on your show, and I had to tell him, I said, well, I used to work for him, uh -huh. so, you know, I have to kind of build him up a little bit. But uh, we're so glad to have you back in Somerville. And Anna, you and I, we've known each other for a while, and uh, we've worked together on several issues um, that affect our veterans. What I want to talk about today, though, are the, the <coughs> growing legal issues that our veterans are having to deal with when they come home. Um, Mr. Secretary, in your role as Secretary of uh, Veteran Services for the Commonwealth, how does your department uh, help to ensure that our veterans are getting the services that they need. Oh, first of all, thank you, Brian, for the invitation. It's such a privilege to be on Rally Point and be here in the great city of Somerville. Okay. We're so pleased uh, in Massachusetts that we have so many, much support uh, towards veterans, and that support goes in the aspect of services. Now, first and foremost, most veterans that come home are successful individuals reintegrating to community. They are numbers of veterans that are in need, and I'm glad to have partners like Veteran Legal Services who are there to provide in some level of outreach, some level of access to the legal system in the ways of support with uh, attorneys, attorneys that are pro bono. Um, in Massachusetts, uh, we also have a focus uh, to do more and to ensure that access at all levels of the benefits that we, that we have, the benefits that have been uh, supported by the legislature and by governor and lieutenant governor in our administration, that we continue to promote that and share it with veterans and their families. Uh, in the same vein, you know, um, Veterans Legal Services is a nonprofit. Yeah, uh, yes, we are. Um, and thank you for having me this morning. You're, you're very welcome. And about how many lawyers do you have working in your organization right now? And, and just tell us a little bit more about Veterans Legal Services. We do have a video that we, we have part of the show today um, that tells, uh, uh, gives us a broad view of what goes on. But how did you get involved with, with you know, helping veterans? Because uh, you're not a veteran yourself. Uh, but I know you have veterans in your family, and it's, it's something that's near and dear to your heart. So tell us a little bit more about Veterans Legal Services and how important it is um, to ensure that our veterans are taken care of. Well, Brian, most people know that if you get arrested and charged with a criminal offense, that you're entitled to an attorney if you can't afford one. Um, but that's not the case when it comes to civil legal matters. So someone can be losing their home, their family, their employment, their source of income, and they may have no right to an advocate to help them with that situation. Um, and that's really where VLS comes in to fill those gaps. So we have uh, six attorneys on our staff, as well as a panel of about 200 pro bono attorneys from Boston area law firms. Um, you know, everything from big law firms like Ropes and Gray and Goodwin Proctor down to small uh, solo practitioners who help with issues like consumer debt, bankruptcy, um, and things of that nature. And as you mentioned, a lot of these issues stem from uh, consequences of service that are lasting for these individuals. Uh, so our veterans have really practical problems that they need help with. Their, you know, their landlord is a, just served them with an eviction notice. They're about to lose their housing. Um, they've been trying to access VA benefits for years and have not been able to get what they need from that system. And our lawyers step in and they help those veterans navigate that problem um, and you know, reach a, a resolution that will help them and their family transition to a place of more stability and self-sufficiency. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's something that they definitely need. Uh, you know, speaking to both of you, especially uh, Mr. Secretary, you and I have, having served in the military, the one thing you always remember and usually miss is that when you're in the military, you're taken care of from, you know, the nth degree all the way up to, you know, family issues, uh, you know, anything that goes on, you can count on your unit to be there. It's like, 
you have a commander who's like a mom or a dad, and you got a first sergeant who's like, you know, the taunting uncle who's going to kind of kick you into place <laughs> to make things happen, supervisors and peers. Um, when you leave the military, that goes away. Indeed. And I think I personally, when I retired, that was the first thing I noticed. You feel alone. And uh, we, we hear so much about veterans who are, you know, are homeless, um, who are suffering from mental health um, issues, who are faced, you know, with domestic issues within their families. You know, you go away and go to an area where people are being killed and you see that happen in front of you, you come home, you don't know how to assimilate that. So, and that, as I said before, that causes some of these legal issues. Mr. Secretary, when you, you know, when we talk about Massachusetts and veteran services, you know, we hear that Massachusetts leads the way uh, for all the states. Little Massachusetts here in the Northeast um, has that law on the books. Tell us a little bit about Chapter 115 and how it, you know, kind of works with, you know, Veterans Legal Services uh, th through their nonprofit, but also how we as, a, uh, as veteran service officers help our, uh, our veterans to ensure that they're getting the information and they need. And Absolutely. Heard. Absolutely, Brian. So mm -hmm. Massachusetts, 100 years before the VA was established, Massachusetts, uh, after the French and Indian War, was already providing aid to widows of, of that war, to those service members or, or patriots in a sense that uh, stepped up and, and, and were participating. Uh, ever since then, a mandate in 47, 1947, that requires every city and town to have a veteran's agent for any community who has a population of 12,000 people, has a full-time veteran service officers. They are municipal employees, just as yourself, who are there as veterans, because that is a requirement to provide a sense of support and access to all the federal, state, and local benefits that may be available to uh, veterans and their families, especially those in financial need. That financial need is shown through a, a program which is in uh, Chapter 115 of the Massachusetts General Law, which is a financial assistance program to provide access uh, and opportunity for veterans and families who are under the federal poverty level. Uh, the aspect of ending and uh, addressing homelessness, preventing homelessness, and providing a higher quality of care for veterans and families who fall under uh, that threshold. That's primary what the focus of the program is. And we, throughout any given month, about 12,000 veterans across the Commonwealth are participating in that program that otherwise would have a very difficult time uh, meetings and meet and uh, uh, choosing between either buying food or affording medication. You brought up something very important, and that's homelessness. You know, there's been an all-out, we, we call it a battle. Uh, when I was in Boston, we had the Homes for the Brave, so mm -hmm. we were trying to get veterans off the street, get them into sustainable housing, and uh, with wraparound services, of course. Sure. Now, Anna, with Veterans Legal Services, I remember when I was in Boston, we, we dealt with you guys quite a bit. Um, what what uh, fail-safes do you have in place as an organization to actually help um, these veterans find housing or get it to where they don't become you know homeless in the first place because sometimes you have supportable housing you know you have housing but then you lose it because you can't afford it or you have issues legal problems um, how does VLS step in and if someone was facing these issues you know what should they know about your services and what, how you can help them that's a great question, Brian. Um, so unlike a, a traditional law firm where you would have to make an appointment and go to their office, VLS is actually taking its services directly to community partner sites in the community where veterans are already receiving other services. Um, so we are on site at the Bedford VA Medical Center, the Chelsea Soldiers Home, uh, the New England Center and Home for Veterans, um, and we provide some civil support at the uh, Veterans Treatment Court in Dedham. So um, you know, if a veteran's coming into one of those sites seeking health care or housing assistance or um, you know, food assistance or something like that, we're already right there working directly with the providers providing wraparound services. Um, and these community partner sites offer housing search counseling. They have advocates who assist with that. They have social workers and other professionals who can intervene if there's an issue going on with someone in their apartment. They can, you know, the VASH program can often provide services where they actually make home visits to that veteran uh, as part of their service plan. So there are a number of ways that we can work with these providers to provide holistic support while we also deal with the legal issue, whatever it may be. That's awesome. Um, so when we're talking about jail diversion programs, uh, what do you see has been some of the wins as far as the, veteran, uh, the veterans jail diversion program and how it helps to bring veterans back up 
to an acceptable sure. level out in society. You know, here in Massachusetts, there is a mandate uh, that every court participates in jail diversion opportunities for veterans and uh, veteran treatment courts more specifically. It gives an opportunity to treat the veteran for that root cause that may have led them uh, to uh, uh, fall on the other side of the law. Uh, we have great successes in Massachusetts. One of them comes to mind is a young veteran who graduated, the first graduate of the Lawrence Veteran Treatment Court, who after treatment was then able, because of the sense of uh, the treatment that he received, to then re-enlist again into the Massachusetts National Guard and was able to then uh, go on a deployment of his choosing because of the treatment. Otherwise, he would have had uh, a negative discharge against them and probably all his benefits would have been lost. But he's now a great member of society who's serving our country. Well, that's outstanding. So we're seeing that these programs work. You know, veteran homelessness is down to one of its lowest points in history. Uh, we do have the jail diversion programs that actually help our veterans to, to not be mired down into the judicial system. We can actually get them the help that they deserve. So I think that these are things that are really important to our veterans. And I got to tell you, Massachusetts is so, so lucky to have these programs. And so lucky to have people like yourself. No, you. uh, Mr. Secretary, your service, thank you for your service and that all you've done as a Marine, uh, all you've done as a veteran service officer, a commissioner in Boston, and now secretary running uh, the, uh, the veteran services in this Commonwealth and continuing um, to have an impact on every single veteran in, the, in this Commonwealth. And Anna, the work that you guys do at Veterans Legal Services is incredible. And it's an honor for me to know you and to know all of you down there, especially my sunshine over there, Lynn Girton, you tell her Thank I said you. hi, um, uh, who's your pro bono director, but it's phenomenal things that are going on in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. And I'd like to thank you both for being here on Rally Point today. And uh, we'll have you back sometimes and we'll talk a little bit more about how we're moving forward to help our veterans. Francisco Urena and Anna Richardson, thank you so much for being with us today here on Rally Point. I'll be back in a few moments with some final words. Thank you. Veterans Legal Services mission is to ensure that when our veterans return from deployment that they have access to the professional services they need. We see legal services as a way to give those veterans a new sense of hope and dignity and the tools to improve their lives and get back on track. VLS is often the only option for veterans who cannot afford an attorney. Veterans Legal Services clients are some of the most resilient people that you'll ever meet. They're the men and women who serve our country. But because of that, they're often also reluctant to ask for help. And by the time they come to us, they may be dealing with a lot of different issues all at once. Everything from housing to family to benefits problems to consumer debt and employment issues. And we help them solve those issues so that they can move on with their lives. Our mission really is not charity. What we do is uh, we are paying back a debt, a debt to those soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen who came forward and stood up for us when we needed them. And now they need us. We are repaying a debt, I think, that we owe. We've asked these folks to uh, be willing to pay the ultimate sacrifice, to live far away from their families, to uh, dedicate their lives uh, to military service uh, on our behalf. And so a lot of the issues that they have are actually directly tied to the service that we've asked them to give, whether it's something that leads to a behavioral incident that can lead to an eviction or something that can lead to a breakdown in a relationship that ends up in a divorce. It seems to me that the least we can do is give back to them, and I'm very you know, grateful to be able to honor their sacrifice. When I returned home from Iraq in 2003, after a year uh, plus in combat situations, one of the proudest accomplishments then and still remains to this day was the fact that all 30 of the men in my platoon returned home without any serious casualties or any fatalities. But once you return home, you start to see people falling by the wayside. They run into problems with substance abuse and alcoholism. They have problems holding their families together. And all of a sudden, the concomitant legal problems start to pile up as well. So these people who are having trouble adjusting are now faced with these problems that they can't necessarily overcome on their own. And there's always been that gap for how our veterans can be served. Who helps them when the landlord comes with an eviction notice? Who helps them through a difficult divorce? And so when I got to know the people here at Veterans Legal Services, and I say that's exactly what their mission was, it just seemed natural that I would want to be a part of it. Our volunteer attorneys program relies primarily on the gifts and uh, passions of individual private lawyers who care deeply about the veterans that we serve. 
what we've tried to do is reach out to certain sections of the bar who have some expertise in that area to help our clients, such as the family law, and they've really stepped up. In other cases, what we've tried to do is say to the big firms, let's try to think of a project within your firm that you could get trained on and do to help meet the demands of what our clients are. And we've done that, I think, with a great deal of success in several areas. The very first client I had through Veterans Legal Services uh, was a veteran of the Iraqi War, um, and he had been trying for over 10 years to become a U.S. citizen unsuccessfully. Uh, he had lived in the United States for over 30 years. He came here from Cambodia as a child to escape the Khmer Rouge genocide that was happening. Um, despite having been here legally for decades, despite serving honorably in Iraq, the Department of Homeland Security had repeatedly denied his applications to become a citizen um, because he had illegally voted in a presidential election. The government determined that he didn't have, quote, good moral character because he had violated the law by voting. And ultimately, after about a year of working with him, we were able to convince the government um, that he did have good moral character, and uh, ultimately he was able to naturalize as a U.S. citizen. You have given me a chance to become an American citizen and you have given me hope for a brighter future. Thank you all. As of January 2018, we have eight staff people. That is uh, up from only two staff people in 2010. Um, so over the last several years, we've had quite a bit of growth. Our current annual budget is about $800,000. That's something that has also grown um, as we have needed to grow staff to build capacity to um, meet the demand for services. From serving 200 veterans out of a basement in a university and free to now having a large office where we're able to serve 700 veterans a year, it's really exciting to see a nonprofit like this grow and thrive and take on the challenges of getting bigger and serving more people and just to see this growth be so impressive and yet never ever yielding on their mission to serve every single veteran who walks in the door. When I first started, we had about 30 lawyers. Uh, right now, I just checked and we have about 200. What I find is that I don't go out and sell this organization. I have people coming to me. Either they were people who served in the military themselves, or typically they are family members or parents or spouses of people who are serving now. And there is this just unending need to want to give back. And I capitalize on that every single day. What we need to do as a community is to come together to provide meaningful support to our veterans upon their return. And at VLS, we think that's the very least that we could do. Serving in our armed forces is a privilege and an honor. Brave men and women come from all over our country with one common goal. That is to protect our freedoms and defend the Constitution. Movies and books glorify war in many cases, but if you talk to those who carry the external scars of battle and the internal scars of the soul, it's anything but glorious or glamorous. We owe it to our veterans and their families to continue to do all we can to ensure that no one is left behind. It is a moral imperative to honor and celebrate their triumphs, but more important, to recognize and help to ease their pain. Our show today gave us a glimpse of services that are out there to help. If you're a veteran or a family member who is in need of help, reach out. Reach out to friends. Reach out to the VA. Reach out to your local veterans commissioner. And in Somerville, that happens to be me. No veteran should have to go it alone. We're here for you. That's part of the perks of service. We are one family created out of the love of our country where no brother or sister should feel helpless, alone, or defeated. You matter. From all of us here at Rally Point, thanks for watching. And if you're a veteran, thank you for your service. You have served this great nation. Now it's time for us to serve you. Take care, and we'll see you next time.